Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Port Charles 411. Today is part five of Lila Quartermain. It's just really going to be 1997. So what you're saying is I said, let's do this for Mother's Day, and it's going to take us to past Father's Day to finish it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love you and your deep dives. It's just been so enjoyable. And you know what, though? Okay, so the very last day, I'm going to write, I need to write this down. Hold on. The very last day, we will read the super short write-up. That's fine. That's fine. Whatever. That, that they had for her. Because I'm I'm just going to bring up the point that we did not have something to record that day. And so I was like, here, short and sweet for Mother's Day, all about Lila. Here is a six-paragraph overview of her. And you were like, no, no, let's get into it. And here we are, into it. Well, I it's love giving you more time to work it. on... Uh, Bobby, so yes, true, but and I mean, I love hearing about Lila because she's awesome, (laughs) but I just I just think it's funny, yes. All right, all right, I think we're gonna go into eight episodes, I think so. Okay, all right, just made myself a note in my eight episode document to read the write up. (laughs) All right, so let's get back to 1997 was really just. She was in a lot of side. She was involved, obviously. So they were dealing with AJ's drinking because this is right after, you know, Jason's accident and AJ kept going in and out of sobriety. And Lila just let him know that she believes in him. And then we really didn't see anything from her until September where Edward, along with Alan, wait on Brenda trying to keep her mind occupied. Edward tells her that he's having a yoga instructor come to the house. Lila berates him for overwhelming Brenda with activities she hasn't even chosen. Brenda leaves the room and Alan comments on going to pick up Emily from the airport. Lila suggests that Brenda go to the move to the gatehouse until Ned gets home. This way, she has all the privacy that she needs. Emily tells Lila she wishes that there was something they could do for Brenda and Lila lets her in on a secret. Brenda is alone in the gatehouse when the bell rings. It's Lila and Emily. Lila says that she has a visitor and Lois appears. Aww. Lila and Emily take Brooklyn, so baby Brooklyn, mm. from Lois so that the two girls can spend some time alone together. So I don't know what was going on with Brenda. I forgot to uh, go over and check that out. But um, yeah, so they wanted to cheer her up. So Lila arranged for Brenda or, um, Lois to come into town and make Brenda happy. That is and then so sweet. In- and then in November, Emily asked Jason how Edward, I thought this was funny, even though it wasn't Lila. Edward or Emily asks Jason how Edward and Lila have stayed together so long. And Jason replies, I figured it was the sex. And Emily starts laughing. <laughs> that is not a thought you want to have about your grandparents. <laughs> no, no. So then in 1998, in January, Edward then proceeds to talk Emily into inviting Jason to her party. The purpose being Lila needs to see the baby, which must be Michael. Mm -hmm. Michael and Brooklyn are supposed to be like the same age. Michael was first birthday. Okay. So Brooklyn would have been, Brooklyn's maybe probably like a year or two older. Huh. I thought that Michael was older than Brooklyn. Um, You never know whenever they need to flip flop. So, well, I write, but I just, I couldn't, I didn't remember how that timeline went. Anyway, Emily agrees to ask Jason and calls him to see if he will attend. Jason at first tells her no, but after Robin's coaxing, he agrees to slip in just long enough to let Lila see her grandson. Jason lets Lila hold the baby while he suspiciously eyes the Quartermain men. Alan takes the baby from Lila and Jason tells them it is time for he and the baby to leave. A few days later, Lila sees Jason and apologizes for the Q's behavior. However, the following week at Michael's baptism, the Q's walk in interrupting it. They start to argue and Jason yells at them saying, this is a church. 
The Q's tell Jason they have a right to see the baptism because the baby is their grandson. As they continue to argue, Lila calls Jason over and asks him if they are all quiet, if they may stay to see the service and afterwards. Jason may kick them all out. And afterwards, Jason may kick them all out. Jason agrees to let them stay, but tells them no one is getting near the baby. And then I love how Lila always just tried to like right. play peacemaker. Yep. And was always about like the greater good. Like if everyone can just shut up, we all want to see this. Like, right. Like she kept them in line. She's like, what are you guys trying to do? You want to hang out with the baby. You want to see the baby. You want to be here for the baby, but you're going to come into a special event and start. Right. Causing chaos. No, exactly. So then in February, there was more fighting over me, over Michael. Jason only allows Lila and Emily to go to into the penthouse. Edward has paid off a waiter to let him know if Carly stops in. Edward and Lila just happen to show up. Edward tries to talk to Carly and Lila interrupts them. Edward acts like he just ran into Carly. He gets up to get a car to take Lila home. And when he passes the waiter, he thanks him for informing him that Carly was there. Lila tells Carly she's no fool and that she should not underestimate Edward. He'll want her to betray Jason. And if she does, she will have to deal with that. Lila leaves and asks the same waiter to use her private home number next time. It's quicker. And Carly looks confused. And then in September, Jax told the accused of Brenda's death and told Lila that Brenda respected her more than anyone. And then in December, the Quartermains were fighting about Michael's birthday. So I did just look. Michael was born in 1997. Brooklyn was born in 1996. Michael's birthday has been revised to 1995 then 91 then 89 then 92 back to 91 then back to 92 so he's only 31 years old because he's well that's still bad hold on 92 yeah because he'll turn 32 new year's eve so then brooklyn was born in 1996 so she's technically almost two years because he was december 1997 she was october 1996 okay but then it was revised to 1986. Brooklyn is 37 Again. and Michael is 31. No. <laughs> so that's no. where we are. No, no, no. I say it all the time. I remember when Michael was born because I was pregnant with Matt. And so they are the same age. Just the fact that Michael was born the end of 97 and Matt was born March of 98. So when they age him too much, it really irks me. So <laughs> knock it off. <laughs> I mean, his is only really five years. Hers is 10. Yeah, that's crazy. And like, how are you aging her back to the 80s when Ned and Lois weren't even on then? Yeah. But whatever. We know it's a soap and it happens, but I just don't like it. (laughs) Right. Uh, So then Emily was invited to the birthday party because she is his godmother. So I'm sorry, the party that was being mentioned earlier than, oh no, I guess that would have been his Maybe that was Emily's birthday party. Yeah, it was Emily's birthday party because they were inviting him to come. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. And then for this one, for Michael's first birthday party, Emily was invited because she is his godmother. Edward says that Carly has an obligation to them as a family, but Lila says that is nonsense. Even Jason doesn't feel an obligation towards them as a family. She tells Emily to go and have a good time. Edward starts to make plans to accidentally happened to meet near the cottage. Emily tells him to go ahead. Jason doesn't live there anymore. Emily explains that Jason is sending a car for her and she leaves. After she is gone, Edward turns to Lila and starts to say something, but she stops him. Lila tells Edward not to insult her by asking her to take a little nap. She tells him that when Jason throws him out to please ask if the snowsuit that she sent fits Michael. (laughs) So I thought that that was like, yeah she's of course upset about it but she understands or respects she's not she's gonna, gonna rock do the boat. it anyway right you know she's not going to rock the boat so then a few days later they were discussing um the auction and this was the auction where they were like auctioning off dates with men for new year's eve i think it was mm-hmm. and originally lila declined to go opting for a quiet new year's at home but then she changes her mind and goes to the auction and i will flip you around so you can watch this I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all of the participants for your generosity. Enjoy your evening. Excuse me. I'm not quite finished. 
Mrs. Lila Quarterman would like to make a preemptive bid of $50,000 for the bachelor of her choice. <laughs> Lila? So I don't know why it wouldn't go full screen there, but... She's so cute. Rolling in. <laughs> so then she didn't pick Edward as her bachelor. But then Edward winds up with Liz. And so Edward tells Liz that he has spent the whole night watching Lucky, watching her watch Lucky. He tells her to make Lucky come to her. He tells her she is so charming. It almost makes up for Lila's betrayal. They discuss how Edward and Lila met, how long they've been together, and when he knew Lila was the one for him. Edward tells Liz that Lila completes him. And this is such a sweet clip. So we are just going to watch this, too. You know, young lady, I, uh, I've spent the better part of this evening looking at the side of your lovely hairdo while you've been courting Quicklash, trying to keep your eye on Lucky Spencer. Oh, I, I was I was just admiring all the beautiful clothing. It's so much fun getting dressed up. <laughs> you know, it's obvious that the boy isn't going anywhere. You are as smart as I think you are. You'll make him come to you. Is that how you got Mrs. Quartermain? Mm-hmm. It was back when she cared enough to know what I thought that would make me pursue her. And now she doesn't give a damn. Darn, I'm sorry. Okay. Did you see how that lady made her grand entrance to come in here and bid that absurd amount of money? She left her husband, a man of position and respect in this community. Seemed like the smile plastered all over my face to cover my mortification. Now she's out there gallivanting with her icy bachelor and I'm a laughing stock. No one's laughing at you, Mr. Cordelie. That's very kind. You know, your, uh, <laughs> your charming company almost makes up for uh, for Lila's betrayal. Oh, come on. You don't really think your wife betrayed you, do you? Well, I, I guess it's just that Lila has a mind of her own. And that's been irritating to me at times. But I've always admired her. How long have you been married? Over 50 and counting. <laughs> How wonderful to be able to spend your life with a person you love. Well, I've been pretty fortunate. It hasn't always been wonderful. Lila deserved a better husband than she got. And she had a better right to better treat me, too. But I've always loved her. And I always will. Did you know right from the start? Well, yes, because you see, Lila is the kind of a woman who treats me. She was really my better half. Now, see, we were, we were lucky enough to find a, a kind of love that happens only once. <laughs> And fight for it. I just love how he talks about her, though. And I think that that really gives because we've been trying to explain how she kept him in line. Right. You know, and it, yeah. And then, you know, they go on to then Lucky and Liz do get back together. But Lila is shown with Jason and Michael. She went over to the garage to spend her New Year's with them. He tells her he wants to teach Michael to be what he wants, like she taught him. Aww. Lila says the look on the faces of men at the auction was worth it. <laughs> and that just, I love it. Yeah. Dropped so in, dropped that... a quick $50,000 and then. <laughs> right. right. Woo. Um, I'm so glad that Lila was able to take that step back and form a relationship with Jason as the new Jason. Cause it would have been awful if they had just all been alienated. And then that's mm-hmm. what helped. Monica end up getting to have a relationship with him and everyone else kind of fall into place. So, Because if it had only been Emily, it would have been, well, she's a child. She doesn't know. She's right. If she would have just continued sneaking around to see him, she wouldn't have, you know, brought him to her party and that kind of stuff. So it was really Lila being like, yeah, we'd all like to get to know him, or at least I'd like to get to know him. So it's just sweet. But also, Jason was getting to know himself, you know, and not in right. the delayed maturity way in the he was in a tragic accident that caused some serious brain trauma. And he doesn't remember a single thing about who he is. Way. Right. Like he has to figure out his life. And yeah, you know, I mean, they tried to just make him who he was. And I understand the um, wanting to remind the person of who they were. Mm hmm. But especially where they're doctors, 
Right, right. Their doctors and his doctors are saying, like, look at these brain scans. He's not the same person. Right. So, but yeah, it is nice that basically everyone was able to find a way to have a relationship with Jason. But you're right. If if Lila had not taken that stance from the get-go, and if she had just let Edward take the lead on it, yep, it probably would not have gone well. You know, and she... Right. She respected her husband enough to let him get so far, but then she was not doing it at the expense of another family member. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's really it. She wasn't letting family hurt family. Right. So, all right. So that was just a nice, short, sweet little bit of, uh, well, that was two years. That was 97 and 98. Not our fault that uh, there wasn't more going on, but I promise next week is going to be so juicy. (laughs) All righty. Well, join us on Monday as we recap this week's shows. Have a good weekend. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, Just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com.